This Dennis McGlenn, I just got a free brunch. At some point, this is not really entertaining anymore. It's just kind of gross. Sandwich, plain chicken breast, nothing spicy, nothing um, greasy. Is it could make him nauseous. Anybody tried the tri tips at Phil's place? I'm trying hard. I'm not. I'm not high on. I'm not that high on anesthesia this time. I probably won't puke. Yes, I have. There was a long, long stretch of like 20 years or so where I had never missed a vert final. The first one I ever missed was in a due tour one. And since then I've missed a couple others, but uh, usually ones where it's like I'm getting carted off of the flat bottom and can't go out there. I've never had an answer for that. I don't see any reason to stop. I will say like there's been interviews done in the past and asked the same question, like maybe 86, 87, and I said, oh, easily for 10 years, and people are thinking then that you're like talking nonsense. That was 20 something years ago, you know? And I just look at it as like, these sports are so new that we really don't know how long someone can like stay at a certain competitive level. And it is an individual sport, so if I do start Stinking it up. It's not like there's other people on the team going, man, we lost that game because of you. If I ate shit, there's somebody that's gonna be entertained by it. I'm not gonna tell it as long as it normally would be, but uh, to sum it up, back in our BMX Brigade shenanigans heydays, Thorne decided to crap into a big gulp cup on top of the ice that was in the bottom of the cup, and then go into the store and say, I want a refund. This drink tastes like shit. And I put it on the counter, and then he decided it made sense to cart it back out after the guy, like, you know, wasn't too happy about the joke. We were in a part of town where bars, nightclubs, everybody goes. He decided to ride around with it, just waiting for somebody to start something with us, which always happened. And a uh, carload of uh, girls, ladies, whatever, they were older than Thorne for sure, screamed out, isn't it past your bedtime, out the window. Thorne rolls up with the window down and goes, you want some shit? Huh? You want some shit? Yeah, sure. Like, bring it on kind of thing. <laughs> it was horrible. Into the car, all over him, and you just heard horrifying screams. It's like it was a Stephen King movie now unfolding, like a novel unfolding as a movie, like, ah, these screams. They said they wanted some shit. Texas State Fair, we had so much fun. This is the days of calling cards. I went off to the payphone to call back home with one of my calling cards, and when I was walking back, I saw a whole family around Thorne and Dave, and they start pointing at me, and I'm walking up from a distance like, what? They had convinced them that I was Bart Taylor from the movie Rad. Bart Connor, you know, the gymnast that played Bart Taylor from the movie Rad. And so they all approached me, you know, the little girl, the little boy, and the whole family. Bart, 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 ready to get stuff signed, huh? huh? Like, you're Bart Taylor, right? You're right, Bart. You're Bart Taylor, right? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm Bart's brother, Buck. <laughs> and it looks in their face like, oh, you know, just dropping, <laughs> dropping whatever they wanted to sign in the pen. So yeah, I was, I was Buck Taylor. No, I was offered the opportunity, but it was during contest season. It was like 86, my rookie years of pro, and I won the pro title, and it was like, I think I would have had to miss a call. Something about giving away your pro title in your rookie year to go spend six weeks in uh, the mountains in Canada to film a movie that I don't want to break any hearts here because there's a lot of people out there that hold the movie rad so so dearly but you know but I was like 19 when the thing was released I could see that there are major flaws in the storyline they do this whole movie about a guy that can't miss a certain test it's the test or the race and then at the end they come out and go well I can take the test on another day mom you're like the whole premise yeah. was just shot so yeah I, I chose to to turn that opportunity down and uh, depending on which side of the fence you sit when it comes to the movie rather that was either a, a wonderful career choice or a bad move but there is a scene in there kids pause it Martin Aparijo was the stunt double for the lady send me an angel Woo there's a scene where they jump into a lake, and if you freeze frame it, slow-mo it, Martin's wig comes off. Martin's wig is floating 
on the water. I'm willing to be proven wrong here, but I've seen this before. Did you get this one from Thorn? You have to kind of know the setting that went in here. The old crew and we were into rolling stuff. Rolling whatever you could find like down a hill to see what it would run into seems harmless enough. And what we found that day was a seven and a half foot tall full pipe. Seven and a half foot tall at least, or was that the two? It was massive. It was a sliver of a big concrete pipe. Within a couple minutes it was tipped up and it was rolling down a pretty steep hill. Oh, I'm yeah. totally incriminating myself here, although the statute of limitations has since passed. Should I cut this off right here? We rolled the pipe down a hill. We were just trying to get it to run into something harmless. With the benefit of hindsight, seven and a half foot tall concrete wheel isn't harmless no matter what it hit. So we rolled it and it was like, oh, it's headed toward the curb. It's not gonna, oop, popped over the curb with no problem. Oh, it's headed toward the wire. It's like, Roll over the wire, pull the slack out of it, kept going. Ah, it's gonna hit the other wire. Oh no, it's headed for the Mercedes-Benz showroom. It's not gonna, oh my God. Big gigantic glass windows. This is bad. Whoever these people were that I may or may not have been with back when this happened, way back in the day. Next thing you know, this thing is inside the showroom with lots of expensive cars nearby. We all crapped ourselves and got out of Dodge quick. That one's in a magazine too, so what am I talking about? They could have already turned us in. I recommend kids don't try to duplicate that one out there. A white girl. Any girl is better than Willie Santos for sex. Yeah, you know the street creds I'll have from having a missing ass here and they say, how's that gone? And I say, uh, Evander Holyfield bit it off. <laughs>